so we step back to 35 yards and we're gonna pick up where we left off at I'm running a 10 and a half inch 300 blackout with a 150 grain American Eagle and I set up my body armor my plate carrier in front of me so if there is for any circumstance a ricochet I have some sort of protection to protect at least my face and my hand. Well, that's a nice little hit. Um, I'm assuming that the bullet built up. It hit it and I guess it stuck some of it. It doesn't look like brass or lead, but it's got swelling to it. Interesting. I guess you could say it added material. It doesn't look like it is. It may have deformed the plate a little bit too. Slightly. I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera or not. But it looks like it's folded. Like a good quarter of it. Has been uh. Been deformed. Alright let's step it up with the uh, 762 by 39 are off on the AK a little bit so let's uh let's hope that I can hit it we're running a mini Draco which the barrel on this I believe is uh, eight and seven seven and three and a quarter inch uh, if there's any corrections it'll be written at the bottom of the screen but uh let's see we're running a 122 grain Tula ammo let's see if we can hit that plate for flinching. Oh, nice. It landed right next to the other one. So you see, that was, uh... Damn, it knocked that extra paint off, and I don't know which one it is. I'm gonna assume the bigger divot is the AK round. And that is primarily because it is a bigger caliber. Uh, 355 to 357, if I'm not mistaken. And the 300 blackout is uh, 308, believe it or not. So it looks like it's starting to bend. Um, let me go get the straight edge. But here's the impact. We are leaving craters now, which is uh, expected. With pretty high velocities. Like I'm not 100% sure where I have to relook at the first impact and measure it according to where this other one's at but it knocked out whatever the 300 blackout had left in there we got a flat edge on it or straight edge and there is very minuscule I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not but there is light coming through, especially. Oh, wait, maybe that's the paint on the ruler. Yep, never mind. There's highlighter. I mean, a uh, marker on the ruler. I thought it was light coming through. 
All right, so we have no deformation whatsoever, no optical illusion. So we got a hot lid around here. It's a 762 by 25 uh, tucker off. Here's the problem. The front sight post is pretty much like an AK. It's got a cylinder and a pin that goes to the top of it. Your elevation screws up and down. So the AK tool will adjust that. But because of this wide cage that it has, my AK tool will not fit over there. So I cannot get it adjusted and I am limited to the ammo. So we are running a 9.6 inch barrel. We are going to cross our fingers and hope that we can hit it before we run out of ammo. So let's give her a, I know she was shooting high. High into the left, so we're going to aim over our plate. No, under our plate, excuse me. Miss. Hit. Damn, I'm good. Where the plate go? Oh, it's up here. I didn't fly off very far like the other ones have. But that was a really, that was a really good shot. Especially for the irons being off. It left a dimple. A fairly, eh, I wouldn't say fairly good one, but it left a dimple. So it hit it pretty good. We see the, slat, the splatter. Seven and a half inch, five five six. We'll be running uh, fifty five grain, two two three. I expect to see uh, significant damage using the faster rounds. Let's give her a good old one two clinker and see what happens. I missed. Look, it's good across it. It repainted it, so it must have hit twice, maybe, or it skipped across it, but that has the most uh, damage as far as taking out material. Y'all see this? Looks like it skid across. Let me see if I can't get that red dot uh, situated so I could give it uh, one good actual hit. All right, so my dot is hitting slightly so we will hold over and see uh, see what we get. Yeah, we're still running. Two, two, threes. That was a good hit. Yes, indeed. That was a decent hit. It looks like it hit real close to where the other one skidded by, but it has a lot. It dug more. I don't know, maybe the same. All right, save the best for last. We are running a 10 and a half inch 223 wild, running a uh, 55 grain uh, 223 Remington. 
I did put the spacer on the bird's head, the monstrum. So she might be suiting a little bit off. I think I got her fairly close. Uh, hopefully we can hit her the first uh, couple of go rounds. Let's uh, see how we do. That's where we're standing at. Flip over here. Oh shit. Now that is some damage. That left a huge crater. And that wasn't even 556 five, neither. Oh yeah, but now we have back deformation. So obviously the ten and a half inch will make it to the next round, and that is the only caliber. All right, so that's all I have for the rifle calibered pistols. Um, we're gonna move into part three, and I will be breaking out the long guns, which will be shooting seven six two by thirty nine, five five six. Uh, I might even throw the fifty Beowulf at it. See how that holds up. Um, and the grand finale will probably be a 18 inch 308, which is going to be nice and hot. So uh, y'all stay tuned for that. Appreciate it while watching.